All right, welcome to part five of our empty offense series, talking about the vertical game. You know, it's very important that this, you know, that you understand this piece. I always felt like defensively, this was the part of the offense that, that the defense is worried about the most. And to be honest, uh, I don't know if I should let the secret out, but it probably isn't the thing they should worry about the most. But it definitely is the thing they worry about the most. When you put five receivers out there and you can go five verticals, then, uh, you know, it, it just it just changes things. And defenses are scared of it. And what they do is they build the defense to contain the vertical game. And what that does is allow some of the other stuff to work better. And so, you know, we didn't necessarily put these things in order from one to ten to what's important. They all ten are kind of just an important entity of the offense. And this one today is really about you got to be good at this so the other stuff works. Do you have to throw 20 verticals in a game or even ten or even five? No, I mean, you may only need to really hit one good one. But just put something on the film down the field so they can play you for that. And, and now, after today, the only scheme stuff we'll have left to talk about will be the situational stuff. And so I'm excited about it because what I, I think, I hope if you've watched all these and you're learning, that you see why we got such a vanilla defense a lot. If you're watching these clips in that first series, first session or the second session, you might think, well, golly, why don't they just do this on defense? And well, sometimes, it, you know, we really genuinely try to make people play, you know, the whole field, vertically, horizontally, with motion, plays off of the motion. You know, if you were cheating to something, we'd take something else. Well, that all sounds good at the clinic, but you have to make this vertical game. It's not that hard to throw those screens, a hitch. It's not that hard to run the ball. Uh, you know, as far as executing the run. It's sometimes hard to throw the ball down the field. So today is solely about that. We really got two plays to talk about for an hour, and that's because I think it's going to be important that we understand the little things about this as much as anything. So, you know, the offense based on three things. We put this in all the last several slides while we're teaching the scheme. We had the sweep and the plays off of the sweep hitting the horizontal field zone areas, being able to hit every part of the field quickly. And now we want to say, can we throw the ball down the field quickly? So if they play you up, can you throw the ball down the field quickly? There's five receivers, obviously, in an empty set. Most teams are going to play two safeties, two corners. Somebody's open. They're going to try to split them. you got to be pretty good at it. This is – Move this, over a little bit. this is uh, kind of our base, empty stuff. We can run verticals out of really any formation. So if we get to questions in a little bit, Bo, we can talk about if they got a specific formation they want to know. I mean, we draw it up first thing. They should end up – I put these six up there because you can see a quads, you can see a tight end trips, you can see a traditional empty, you can see the wing empty sets. Um, we want to hit the five landmarks that you see there. And ideally, these things with these these five landmarks would end up in the same area. We got an outside go, an outside go, a hash. And then it could be if it's the ball, put the ball on the hash, because that's kind of sometimes a tricky one. When the ball's on the hash, this may need to be more of a straight run. And this is a midfield go. So we got a midfield go, we got hashes and numbers. If you're in the middle of the field, it's really easy. You got hash, hash. Numbers, numbers, mid go. Um, when you get into trip or quads out here, you got to go to the other hash, opposite hash, middle, hash, outside go out. There. So is all that perfect? No, but we really taught our kids about getting to those, those five landmarks. And basically, no matter what formation we put you in, you had to figure out what number you were and get to that landmark. So, um, I want to go through each position and talk about, you know, what were we thinking at that position and get a little more detail about it. So 
Bo, what I want to do today is uh, if anybody has a question, just interrupt me and ask. Don't wait till I stop and ask, you know, because we're talking about specific position, specific stuff. You know, we might need to answer their question right then. So if anybody has a question, put it in the chat and I'll answer it right then. We'll just interrupt me and I'll pick back up where I left off once we answer your question. Um, so with the quarterback, you know, here's the deal, guys. I don't think any of this stuff's earth shattering. I don't think I'm – if you know a lot about verticals, I doubt I'm going to tell you anything you, know, you didn't already know. I, I would love to say I do, but this is all stuff I learned from studying this play. I just want to be good at this play. I want to put a lot of effort and energy into this play. But, you know, it, it's not something – it's kind of like last time we talked about screens and inside zone. It's not like other teams don't run it. What I thought we did well was just practice that we genuinely put the guys up versus every scenario and practiced it and got good at it. And so it, I want to talk about the little things best I can. So the quarterback is basically looking – this really easy. The outside guys are always going to get played by the corner, right? So the two outside guys are going to get played by the corner. I'm going to back this up. So the corner is going to cover him, and the corner is going to cover him. And, you know, you're going to have two safeties. If this guy rolls down low – where he's low, that's the throw right there. Or you could say this guy's playing between these two wings, and that's the throw. There's not a wrong answer there, but the quarterback's going to pick a side based on a line. We saw a lot of this, this safety playing back some maybe. And because of that, you were easier running something short underneath him. It was a little harder to get inside of him, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But this guy had a struggle to pick one, so we just split reading. If he went this way, we threw this way. If he went this way, we threw this way. We let him clear. Um, but we really wanted to think a lot about wide open, see if this makes sense to you. If it doesn't, please ask me a question. When we're in this wing alignment, we really want to think, can we get a wide open, like stealing, like against the scout team, touchdown? Or – I would like to see us try to make this always this wide hash inside go work no matter what. Or can we throw it up down the field? Because I was fine with the outside goes too. So the quarterback's really looking at these three inside goes. He's really looking at these three inside goes pre-snap based on where their two safeties are. They can only put two guys usually over those three. Where are they? Because sometimes this free safety will line up right here. And he'll cover him, and this guy will come wide open for a touchdown. Now, they don't ever do that on purpose, but it happens. And when it does, you got to make them pay for a touchdown. That's what I love about these plays. When you hit these verticals, these are explosive plays. These are not, um, you know, six-yard games. This is not like – the, uh, the screens, and if you remember from the last session, I told you that our fast screen stuff was one of our most efficient plays, but one of our least explosive. So every play was getting six, seven, eight yards. Not many of them were getting 20, but not many of them were getting two. And there's a lot to be said for that. Well, this is kind of the opposite. This is actually one of the least efficient plays. You're gonna throw some incompletions. You're gonna scramble some, you're gonna get sacked. I mean, things are gonna happen, but when it, if it is a positive play, if we complete it, it's an explosive play. And so, I mean, what percent of that has to happen to make it a great play? I mean, even if half of them, that's a great percent. And we were probably at about half of them being efficient, but the also half of them were explosive. So half is a low number for efficiency play, but half is a really high number for explosive plays. And so if you can get this safety to play one side or the other, or like here, Get the safeties to split like you get an empty sum and run three right down the middle. Or they're worried about that, so they bring this guy to the hash and he runs with him, and we hit this guy right. You, the quarterback is looking at these three inside goes for a cheap, quick one. Look at all these three inside goes. The quarterback is looking there. Pre-snap, do I see one I really like? He's going to catch the football. He'll take a full drop. But on that third step in his drop, if they're open, the ball's got to come out. So if we're talking about fundamentals of the quarterback, when they hit that third foot hits the ground and they're dropped, if somebody is wide open, like practice, scout team, routes on air wide open, we got to put it on. We don't have time to gather our feet or hit. It's got to be a one, two, three, bam, throw. And we practice that. So that's one of the throws. It's just it's open. 
Get your feet down, set your feet, get the ball up and throw it. If that's covered, either by alignment, pre-snap, or you know, then we would likely look at that wide inside go, wherever the big field is, the guy running that big hash. We like to think we can get him open a lot of times, no matter what, even if he's covered. We'll talk about how when we get to receivers. So they can force to him some. But the last throw is always just throwing it outside go. So if you look at the read, it's really inside go, inside go, outside go. If there's one safety, they're reading the safety. It's old school vertical reads. If it's two safeties, inside go, outside go, you know, and the outside go really is the check down. We can talk about that in a second. But the outside go really is the check down. So if there's two safeties, which there usually are, like here, you would go, you know, you see that one guy playing two? Okay, let's play him like one safety and read him off. But if we get here, we're going to pick a side. We're going to pick a side. If for some reason this guy turns and runs with him and he's guiding and it's covered, covered, going out here outside. We pick this side and we try to zip it in here, but somehow it's covered, going outside. Inside go, outside go. Outside goes to check. Um, talking about protection, which I hadn't talked a ton about in some of this other stuff because it's been play action and we just genuinely don't, um, we just genuinely don't see a ton of stuff in our play action where it's an issue just as long as we cover up. In the five-step stuff, you know, or the, the vertical game, you, yeah, you can see some games. But, you know, this was a big – we're going to get to situational stuff next time. This was a big first and second down call for us. It doesn't mean we wouldn't call it on third down. It just means that, I, um, you know, I, I was likely going to call this on first and second down. We, we did not get a ton of blitz on that player. People were – you know, I had other plays I liked better on third and long or something like that. But the outside backers were hot unless they showed early and we made the two-up call like we talked about last time and then it switched, shifted to the inside back. What do we do if the hot come? If the hot comes from the outside backer and we can – or the inside backer or outside backer and we can force it in quick on the inside go, we're just going to throw it like a bullet. I got a few of those on the film I'll show you. But for us, the hot a lot of times, somebody's coming, we just set our feet through the outside game. It just became a fade. We give our guy a chance, one-on-one. -on -one. Now, some people tear that apart that know a lot about football, uh, and they probably know more than I do. But it's, um, you know, that that's what it is. You know, that, that's what it is. That's worked good for us. So, I don't know. Um, now. Couple notes. If you're not sure, always throw to the wide side of the field. If you want to pick a side, the quarterback picking side, pick the wide side of the field. Um, and always be comfortable throwing the outside go and always be comfortable taking a shot. And what I mean by taking a shot is if we go back, if this guy walks down and plays more like man, like press, and there's nobody behind him, don't be scared for this receiver to fast horse, fast feet, get around him, run like an inside go, but throw it like an, an outside go. You know, get that ball up and over the top of him, let him run under it. Uh, don't be scared to do that. Remember, most of the time, this is a first and second down call. Does anybody have a quarterback question? I'm trying to be as descriptive as I can be without – boring everybody to death um with the running backs they it's the same thing we've talked about over and over and over again they are a uh they are a um wing back they're in the backfield and they're playing receiver so uh we got to be able to do all three of those things they need to take the best release when they're a wing back and go straight up the field Straight up the field. So if they get off course of that, we'll show some of this on the film. It may make more sense then. If we go off course of that, if they get outside of their lane, they need to get right back on top of where they were originally, run that vertical plane all the way down the field. If they're in the backfield, really nothing different than the wing. They just do it from the backfield. So we're going to run all five receivers out on this play. So even if they're in the backfield, they're running out. We don't keep them in for pass pro. 
the guys that are hot are hot, we throw off them. And we just always do it, you know, and try to get a lot of reps. Um, if they're a receiver, you know, like Frank or Phil or Rifle Lightning for us where the wings widened out the receiver, then they run the receiver rules. They got to be inside goes or outside goes. And we'll talk about that. If they're the number three guy, they go down the middle of the field. So here's the deal with the inside receiver. And this is the throw we talked about. We thought we could kind of get open uh, no matter what. So if they've got a guy down, and we can't, you know, used to do a two safety, one safety thing, and that's what this graphic says, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I started looking at it like this because of our empty run game stuff. It was basically if you're that number two receiver, you're running down the hatch, do you have a safety deep on you? Or do you not? Yes or no? Because it really didn't – they didn't know if there was a safety on the other side of the field or not, and it really didn't matter. So I quit saying too high and one high. If they had somebody – and a safety was a deep guy. So if they just had this guy here, we'd call him a linebacker. That's a safety. That's a linebacker. If they've got a linebacker and a safety, they're going to go outside of the outside backer, always outside of the outside backer, and then bend inside the safety. If they just had an outside backer, they're going to go outside the outside backer, and then they're just going to flatten back up where they're on that vertical plane, like we talked about, where they end up in the same place they left. Even if they have to get back to it. And so if this guy's play a man, he just turns and runs with him. Where am I throwing the ball? You know, if he, somebody safety over here is trying to split him, cover both of them, or corners trying to cover him and the number one receiver, then he's got to stay straight so he can at least make that area as wide as possible. Um, but they got to go outside of the outside backer. They got to go inside the safety. And they got to hear that over and over again. So one of the things that made this play good for us was, you know, we go to practice and we're going to put these kids in these scenarios. We're going to say eight minutes of vertical drill. And it's just a quarterback and a line of inside receiver. Quarterbacks on the right hash, receivers are on the left hash, and then we'll flip. And it's just like we're just putting them in these scenarios. We're just moving these guys around, giving them different looks. And the quarterback has to throw this one because it's just one throw, so it's not a read. We're like, try to complete it. Try to complete it. And just do a bunch of them. And people all the time on our verticals, the first question I get is, well, you know, I don't know if we got a kid that can throw that, Coach. I mean, is that a pretty tough throw? And if you're thinking that, I mean, I guess – I guess you may think that. And like everything else in life, you'll probably be exactly right. Um, but I didn't think this was a very difficult throw. I thought some of the other throws – there's some other throws that we throw that are tougher. But you'll see on the video, the ball should be coming out fairly early. And, I mean, if they got a decent arm, they can make this throw. It's really about the technique of these receivers getting open on this play, whereas, like, when we ran post-wheel, it wasn't all about that receiver technique. I'm not going to lie to you. It was about play action, getting that safety down in the box and just throwing it up and letting the kid go get it. So this is more about the receiver's technique. And they got to go outside the outside backer, inside the safety. Keep that in mind when we're watching this film. Um, outside go. Now, they could fly or die. I mean, they could break the route off or they keep going. Now, I we, the, the longer I coached this, the more I discouraged them killing the route because I we tagged something like that on third down, and we'll talk about that next time, and I like that better. I really like them just running the verticals. But if the corner gets really deep or the corner starts trying to move over toward the number two receiver to split them, they can kill the route right there, run a 10 out, kind of a comeback, and uh, it, it's going to be wide open. It's just a matter of them understanding how to do that and when to do it. So if they're not sure, they should always just run the code, just run the numbers. But outside go should always be releasing down the numbers and let the ball fade you outside the numbers. This isn't earth-shattering stuff if you watch a lot of football stuff. But you'd be amazed how many people don't do that. They need to run down the numbers and stay on the numbers. If they get off the numbers, they got to get right back on the numbers. And the only time they go from numbers to the sideline is if the ball drifts them over, them, which inevitably it will. But that will give the quarterback an area to throw the ball. If you do that, it's, it's almost a it's a 1%, less than 1% interception rate. Tell them. If, if you do that, the interceptions are going to happen when you move past the numbers, get closer to the sideline, and the quarterback throws it basically in front of the receiver because there was nowhere else to throw it. Uh, I, I bet more than half of the interception that happen on this play occur in that exact scenario I just named in high school football. Um, 
all right, this is the past pro stuff we talked about. So like I look down here is probably a little better description. I did a couple different ways to show you, but if this guy's hot, he's way out there playing number three, then he came late, then we would throw where he came from. This guy came late, we'd throw where he came from. If he came early, we would make a two up call right there. He, them two would take them two and now he's hot. So what if both of them come and he comes? Then we throw hot. You no know, big deal. Then we throw hot. But what's the hot? If you're not sure, the hot's throwing the fade. The outside goes. We just put it up outside the numbers, let him drift to it. Like I said, 1% interception rate. Give him a chance. You know, even fronts, like everything, even's a little easier to pass for than on. So kind of see that. But I think if they brought them on both sides, then both sides would kick out. Both these guys would be hot at that point. The quarterback's got to be ready to throw off of them. But you got to remember, if they're bringing people like that, there should be alleys on the inside go. And, again, remember this first, second down call, we just didn't get that that often. Anybody got a question about any of those rules uh, before we watch the video? I think people have more questions on the video than you might get. Tried to put as many diverse ones on here as I could. Uh, all right, so this is a black formation, wings, outside receiver, outside receiver, inside receiver. So if we're running verticals here, they got four DB. I mean, this is this is defense of the millennium versus this offense. This is what you're gonna see: four across, three three down, two outside backers playing the sweep stuff. Two inside backers trying to run. What do you do to this? Well, you you know, there's a ton of good stuff out here, which we talked about. Uh, but we'll get the game plan more now. Let's just talk about verticals. Because this guy's playing inside, this kind of worst case scenario on the field. I'm gonna try to talk about each of these for a minute. I hope I'm not boring anybody, but I want everybody to understand this play. So the quarterback right now sees we really normally like him in this scenario, but that guy playing in that far inside the hash. Indeed, what we like to do is run down the hash and break inside of that guy, but he's not really going to let us. So now it might be easier if we can do it. If the old original, these two are running goes, and he, we're going to try to split him, and that's what we end up doing. So, see, he kind of he, he turned his hit. He turned. This safety turned. We got him where we want him. We put it on him. Touchdown. And that's the one you're talking about every now and then. You just get a steal in and you got to take that one. You know, every now and then you just get one you stole, and you got to take that one. So that's right there. Um, all right, here, this is quads. So they got the wing there. We ran crews, if you understood the formations when we talked about alignments. This would be like brown crews. We were in brown, and this is the other running back. He was lined up over there. He went in motion. We hard counted. They didn't jump. And he came over here and got set up. So now we run the vertical. He probably moved in some, knowing we had crew. So they spread out right after we hard counted. He's going to run the numbers. He's going to run the hash and try to bend in here and get open. He's going to run the middle go. And he's going to really try to get to this hash. I don't think he does it. I think he clears and gets open. They throw him the ball. But he should really be trying to clear here and then bend back here. And then – what I liked about this play, for us, this guy was pretty good. And so we would do this, like, look, if one of these three inside goes, is wide open, throwing the ball. If they're not, throw it up to the X. And you can see they were doubling the X at this point. So that was, that's why it's going to be open. We're not going to throw to the X. But see, they're doubling him. But you can't double him, bring some pressure, and then not leave somebody open. Like, that's who we're looking at right there. So he caught the ball right on the hash. I mean, that's beautiful. That's exactly spreading the field. And to see these balls, that's not, you know, I want to talk about this throw for a minute. Because, again, I'm not, I'm just advocating for what we did. I'm not saying anybody's wrong. But if you say, Coach, we can't make this throw. Okay, let's see. The quarterback is standing on the 40-yard line. He throws a line drive to the 20-yard line right in front of him. That's on the hash, on the hash. That's an easier throw than throwing the fast screen or a bubble. But everybody throw a bubble. You know, that's a shorter throw if you just break your mathematics skills out 
that's a shorter throw than throwing a bubble. You know, so he can do it. Now, is it a little harder if we had to throw this throw down the hat? Yeah, it's a little harder. But it's not it's not as hard as, as sometimes we make it out with some reps and the kids gotta be decent. I mean, you got you're not gonna win any games if you don't have somebody that's decent, I guess. You're gonna have to be decent. But somebody decent can do this. I'll let it play this time. Something. All right. Um, this time we hit the same thing, hit the inside go, we back it up. We're hitting him right around the middle, he clears. Put it on him. Get some yards. You see it here. Now, this is a great look, by the way, of what the quarterback would look at. So there's two safeties. There's a safety. There's a safety. They're basically on the hashes. You know, because we're in Frank here, Phil, we're not in the wing stuff. It's a big – I mean, that's it's going to be hard for this guy to cover both of these. So the quarterback can identify that. Right here, he's already see, he's already got his arm up. We're ready to throw. This is great. This is exactly what it should look like. Um, all right, now we're back to wings for the number two. All right, I think these are all the throws out wide, so let's start with these. These are kind of the trickier ones. Now, we got this a lot. We got this a lot. Remember, this is the same defense as earlier. It's just that there's the outside backer backed up a little bit. He's going to come if they get motion or something. And he's going to come if they get motion. But it's a 3-4, four, four cross. But this guy's now on the hash. Remember that game from a few games ago? I showed you this guy was more in here. This guy's on the hash. Now, we really like this. If he's got a backpedal and cover both these goes, there's a lot of grass there for him to just kind of box him out and catch the ball. So this is a really good route, him running straight, starting to bend. The quarterback's already got his arm up. The ball's there. And this is not a great placed ball because it's a little down, but Mike could have come out a hair quicker. You know, the only thing I'd have liked to see here is maybe almost shorten that drop and just throw it. But we pre-snap determined. I mean, we actually had him too, by the way. See that? Um, all right, see, we hard count here again. So now we're going to bring him all the way out here. And we're going to run it with the hash, mid-go, other hash, outside go. And we end up throwing the outside go. This is in an orange set. Or now we got, and you can see it here, this team was really good. Team played for the region championship this year. And uh, they playing two on two out here for the sweep. These two are covering these two, playing run. He's playing that run. These two are covering these two. Nobody's got him. You can just see by a lot, because we ran the ball a lot of the set, nobody's got him. So anytime they got a tight wing, the tight end's going to go straight. The wing's got to widen out here to the numbers. He's going straight, hash. The what? I didn't, didn't even release, but we just get him down the field. They tried to run the inside backer with him, but they didn't have a safety over top of him, so we just got yards. You see it here. Um, I see we got a question. Let me finish this play, and I'll ask him. But right here, you can see, like, nobody's covering this guy. Over the top five tries to run with him, but we pre-snap the side, and we're throwing this. Um, and we pra we would practice that all week. All right, what's the question, Bo? Uh how do we teach the quarterback when when his drops are going to be different, or how how do how do we work the different drops? Well, it, it's really only one drop. I mean, he's got to he's. I know I said somebody short drop. He's got to have a kind of what we call a hot drop, meaning, you know, they're blitzing and he's got to he can still his step should be one, two, three, and in that third step, the ball should be coming out. Uh, if he's throwing that premium route, if he's throwing his first read, I guess. 
He's not throwing his first read. He can kind of gather and throw the second read. If it was hot, what I would tell him was the same step, just speed it up. You know, if it's one, two, three, throw, it'd be one, two, three, throw. I don't know if that makes sense to coach. But, you know, we just – we saw something coming. Or, or like, what will happen right here, Coach? Let's say this guy right here. I, I know this play we're about to watch. What's going to happen is this guy right here is going to run outside of him and just go catch the ball down here because this guy's playing like an outside back. But if this guy was playing really deep, say he was playing way back here, nobody's coming that we can't pick up, the quarterback might want to shorten his drop a little bit. And by shorten it, I mean just run it, just do it quicker, get his feet set quicker, and put it on him before that safety can come up. Let the safety backpedal bend in front of him and like kind of box him out, if that makes sense, and just throw it line drive right to him. So what we would do with the quarterback, I hope this is answering his question, we would just practice those scenarios. We didn't st- – I don't believe in standing over there and doing 8 million drops with, like, you and the quarterback. We put this kid in the game. We like Everybody else was doing something else. And the quarterback and this kid and a couple of scout teamers were out here like this, and we're just running everything you could imagine, bringing a blitz, you know, walking this guy down late. What if he's deep and he walks down late? No big deal. We practice that. He's deep and he stays deep. What if he's deep and he kind of baits you and you short drop and you're about to throw, but he's baiting you? Then you regather and throw the outside there. So you're asking how we worked it. We worked it in those group individual periods, which we're going to talk about in practice. But the base plan was always to just one, two, three, throw, you know, and then, or one, two, three, gather, throw. And, and, and then those kind of little intricacies you would do, we would practice over and over again in the periods we had for and if you really think of the plays like sweep, plays that came off a of sweep, split field plays, and verticals, we were working four plays every day. I mean, I know it's more complicated than that. But that's how, you know, if we could get real intricate with those four plays, you know, then, then we had a chance. And so this was one of those plays that we spent a ton of, uh, of time talking about, you know, and a ton of time working. So we're going to line this defense up, Coach. And we're going to bring this guy, but he's that's the two up. This guy comes, tackle's going to take him. But we're going to bring this guy, and we're going to walk this guy. All right, what are we going to do? All right, we're going to keep him back. We're going to, you know, we just tried to – and then made the quarterback – I just believe, me personally, I'm sure there's some guys out there that disagree with me, but I believe the best way to train a high school quarterback is like that. Put him in real situations. Let him mess his drop up that way. Like Patrick Mahomes ain't got a great drop every time. You know, sometimes that robotic kind of thing isn't any good. You need to let these kids play. We've got a base way, and then we're going to adjust based on that. Um, all right, so this look we talked about. we got 5-2 or 3-4, however you want to call this. There's two ups on both sides, so the tackles are going to take these guys. These two would be hot, but notice they ain't coming. Uh, safety. But this guy's played over, so really, who's playing him? You know, and that's kind of what you're looking at here. I, I get they're trying to run with him with the outside backer. Okay, no big deal. We might have known that, might not have. I but nevertheless, if we're not sure, we always want to hit here. And we just ran past him. That's a really nice play. And you see the difference in the quarterback understanding this. Because that's an outside back. And I, I hope you all understand what I'm saying with terminology-wise. To me, that I know that is the safety. That's the safety roll down. But when he gets in this, even, even with these guys, we're going to coin him a linebacker. This is a safety. You got to go outside of a linebacker, inside of a safety. So he's going outside of this linebacker when he rolls down. And now the quarterback's not throwing that bullet like he was throwing, but he's kind of backpedaling like he's a safety. Well, that we eat up that cushion so easily that the quarterback knows he can kind of throw this almost like a fade or like an out. You know, he got some – put a little air on it. Um, That's a good look there. All right, here we are with same thing, wings. This is black. Vermont. All right, look, inside guy goes. See this? We got pressure. Now they're bringing pressure. Now we can still pick this up because it's not outside and inside pressure. But nevertheless, we got some pressure. We got a wide open wing. All right. Now we got quads. Outside, outside backer, inside the safety. Got lit up there, but 
if you watch the route, this is good though. These are outside backers because they're out, two of them really. Go outside of them, inside the safeties. You just find the hole. See how the quarterback shortened his step there, Coach? This is actually Coach Anderson asked this question. There's a couple of these in the same game, I think, where we did this, where we just kind of got it on them because that was where the hole was. I think there's an even better one in a minute where the quarterback has to just almost catch and throw. He's kind of doing there. You know, he's not taking his full drop. That's just him kind of adjusting to what he can do. Same thing here. This may be the play I was talking about. Okay, so we're in the same thing. We're in quads. And for whatever reason, these guys stayed 4-2 or whatever they were doing in quads so we could get the extra guy. You know, they got one outside backer to really take all three of these guys. Um, so right there, it's open. We put it, see the ball's already out. There's the ball. So if you kind of, what this is a good example of what I was talking about, about just good sense. These guys are trying to jump stuff late. We just put it in front of them. What I like about it, if you watch the light, like if you go back to here, oh, let's see. Hey, Chris, is that just a predetermined read by the quarterback then when he's up there reading what he's looking for? Yes. Because when in a predetermined is just common sense. You know, I don't tell them, like, if they do this exact thing, we're going to do this exact thing. You know, I just kind of give them a little, we just put them in all these scenarios and practice and kind of let them play ball. So, like, what I'm what I went back to this play because we talked a lot about is on this play, I said the word Vermont, which meant vertical stuff. So the quarterback knows, okay, the easiest throw, if you don't have a wide open throw, if you can't get one of these wide open rips like I showed y'all earlier. And we didn't get a ton of those. Let me back up for answering your question, Coach a second. We needed one or two times a year one of these wing backs to run down the field wide open and score a touchdown. If we could get one or two of those a year then everybody worried about it, and we got people walling off and all that. What they ended up doing is now making it where this is the more likely throw. So the quarterback is a lot of times looking. He's looking at all three inside goes, Coach. Remember that. So there's one, two, three. He's looking to the three inside goes and saying, do I have a stealing wide open? It would look like here he does with him, but we probably ran it enough, and we knew that guy was running with him and wasn't a great matchup for us. If you're ever not sure, you throw to the wide inside go, which is here. And if you're ever not sure from that, you throw to the outside go, which we're getting to in a few minutes. But how he would throw to that inside go, Coach, which is really your question, was it predetermined? How he would throw this ball to him, that is determined by what we practice. So on what – I'm just going to let this run again. But on this play, I said the word Vermont. I didn't know how that boy was going to line up. We threw the ball just like that. If you fast forward a couple plays, I said the word Vermont. We threw it just like that. You know, I mean, the, the next play uh, here, I said the word Vermont. He saw that probably that there's just a big hole. He's like, golly, you know. I did not tell him to do that. I also didn't get on to him for doing that. But it did come from repetition and practice. That wasn't this kid doing his own thing is what I mean. This is one of them plays where, his job is to be the point guard. Now, this is like prevent. I don't know if I like this play as much. That looks like prevent, like four and a half or something. Um, does that answer your question, Coach? I don't want to cop out answer. I just I like the, yeah, that. That answers completely. Yeah. I just I was just you just watch you know watching the film, and I just wanted to know how does it, how does he understand which side to throw the ball to when he's up there reading the defense. Um, to get that, you know, who's going to be open as quickly as possible, especially with guys doing the inside blitz or the outside blitz. Right. Well, and it's not an easy play. I'd be lying to you if I didn't say this play in general is fairly expensive. That's why we've been talking about it for 40 minutes. You know, um, it – but you got to make – for us, you had to make this work because if we didn't make one of these, like if we didn't get an occasional one of these, then all the other stuff didn't work. The truth is – we, these, like I said, I, this is about half the play. This is not half, but I mean, half of our plays look like this and half of them were incompletions or sacks or scrambles or, you know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't mistake. But when we hit a few of these, all of a sudden, all the other stuff worked better. It was easier to run. All of a sudden, people backed up. 
we could throw that screen. It was stealing. All of a sudden, they weren't that worried about Buck Sweet getting five yards. They didn't want to give up that long touchdown. You know, so you had to find ways to make people pay down the field and worry about it. And, and so we put a lot of effort into this one play, just four verticals, and everything we could think about on they could do and kind of let the kids make plays. I mean, it, here you see, for example, this is a 3-4 team, but they've got the safety roll that way and in the middle of the field. I mean, that's a – well, not good camera work. But that was a, a um, easy pitch and catch. No safety over number two because we're an empty. He's having to run with him probably, and he's just not there. Corner's trying to play both of them. Empty. Um, good inside go throw right here. This is an oldie. Uh, but there's a good outside, outside backer rip in, ball on them. Um, I always thought it wasn't a great idea, Coach, to uh, go crazy with them on reading the defense. It was more like, look at these three inside goes. You know, use your brain. Who looks like they're probably going to be open, you know? Uh, and if you're not sure, you throw to the outside go, and I put a few of those on here at the end, I think, and these may be some of them. Uh, here I know we got outside, outside, outside. This is just not good football by them, but we take it. You got to get a few of these. Um, now we could also run to Virginia. We had Vermont, Virginia, which meant they switched. So now he goes to the middle, he goes to hash. He goes the hash. He goes outside to the numbers. You can do some stuff like that. You can get a couple. I put a couple clips of that in here, but a couple times a year, you can kind of steal something on this. Um, so now he's going to run the numbers and he's going to run the hash. A really good play there. So instead of him running straight, they're going to switch because they get so used to him straight. And he's trying to wall him off, and he's not there. That's why that worked. A real good play. Probably should have called it more on. Same thing here. We got him running the hash, him running the numbers. It's just wheel look. Same thing up here. I think this time we're going to run him in the middle. Him around, we put it on him. Probably a little too close together when the ball's in the air, but the landmark was good. Um, all right, so the next play is choice. We're going to talk about this one. Let it run. All right. This is more of a, okay, if you understand old school football, Vermont was five-step, and this is three-step. Or in the gun, this is a catch and throw, basically. And the other one was a set your feet and throw. And so this is more what I would have wanted to call Coach Anderson if I wanted him to throw it, catch it, and throw it quick. Sometimes it just worked out. They gave us the look to throw it, and you saw a couple examples of that. But if I thought it was going to be a catch and throw immediately kind of look, I would rather run this play. So what is this play? All right, on the outside, we did a couple things. You're going to see on the film, sometimes we ran these guys on goes. Sometimes we ran screens. It depends on the year. I think the best way to do it is run a screen here. And the reason for that is it pulls people that way when they get that action. So you go fast screen, fast screen kind of fake block. Maybe these guys go out with them. I'm sorry. Um, that isolates the outside backer with this number three. And he needs to go three steps out, like he's going out, either the screen block or running out or whatever, stick his foot in the ground and come back. And when he sticks his foot in the ground, the ball should already be up. You'll see some of those. On the two-man side, you really got a, a just a old crook concept, if you know what that means, or a little short sale where we get a go and a five out. Go and a five out. Now, if this guy overplays the five out, you can stick it and come back. And that's where these guys have choices. You know, honestly, used to would let these guys do both. Both the inside guys would go out or come back. But I didn't ever like this one going out to such a far throw. And 
it, that defeated the purpose of what we're trying to do. We had other stuff for that. So the quarterback's read is, is this stealing wide open? And if it is, throw it. If it's not, let's look to this two-man side and let's try to get this guy open. And if all else fails, let's throw the go. Let's throw the outside go. We use this play as our way to call a fade, if you understand that. If I just want to throw a fade to the outside, I would call choice. And we may even, like, give the quarterback a little signal or some kind of nod to know, like, hey, let's get the ball out here to the X on this play, unless something is stealing open here. So if something's just wide open, throw it otherwise. So the X is always the check down here, what we would think of as a fade. Um, so that's what we're saying here. If the quarterback's unsure, so there's a lot of options here. We can throw that number three choice to the field side. We got the go or the out on the boundary side. Uh, and the, the fade throw, if you're not sure, is that outside throw, that outside go. And then the O-line is blocking for draw. So last time when we were talking about a horizontal game, one of the coaches asked me, you know, would you ever just run this like a draw instead of an ISO? And I said no, because we had another play, and this was that play. So if I wanted to run quarterback draw, we would call choice. So on the play choice, there's four or five different things that can happen, and, you know, you'll, you'll see all of them in the flint. If the, the wing backs are – if they're in the backfield, we will have them block for the quarterback. We usually don't have them in the backfield a lot on this. If they're a receiver, they're going to do receiver rules. And here's what you can see, the trip side, fast screen, fast screen block, three steps out, come back, get inside of him no matter what. On the twin side, number one's got an outside go, number two's got a choice route. And you can kind of see the options there. If this guy's going, he's out. If he's there, he's out. If it's deep safety, he's out. If the guy's planning more head up and going with him, he's going to stem him out and maybe come back. This is a great play. We push the ball down the field. That's how we pass pro to draw, same as the uh, – basically, that's the same rules as what we did for the Roger and Louie play. If not, it's just the line would pass it and do it instead of just on block. Put a ton of clips on this. So I'm going to let it play 16 minutes. We don't have to watch all 16 minutes, but I'm going to let it play. I'm not going to stop it like I did with the verticals. But, you know, here's number three, wide open. This is three out, come back. That's not a great route, but I didn't put these in any particular order. They're probably in order of years or something. Uh, same thing here. He's more head up. Over there, we're head up. So, what I think this here, see, we went out and come back on the other side. Got a good one. That was a good play. All right, so out here you see they got one on two. He's going to stem him out, come back. That's a good route. That's the best route they run. Stem him out, three steps, come back. All right, so now over here, this guy's a little more inside. This isn't ideal, so we look over here. You understand why he went out? Let's see if we can pause that. All right, so they, they slid the front over here. We're in empty. They're playing. It's like a pass empty team. You understand that, they so we got three down, two in the box. They slid it's like a three-three stack team, but they rolled four. So this guy's out here for him. If he doesn't have anybody, he always goes. We got to go in and out. That's draw. So that time that we didn't like anything, he just takes looks at it and takes off. This time we're doing out of empty out of quads. Uh I believe I gave the quarterback here a uh a call because we have press right here, nobody behind them. We may have just said, look, give him a chance. So we put it on him. Um All right, this is a decent look at it. You got him head up, or he's coming. So now he's coming even better. They tried to kind of bait us there, but we got between them. That's quarterback draw. They go.
All right, so now we're going to motion. I think there's a shift for motion here. We're going to motion him across. It's number three. He's going to run the choice. Um, he's three out, come back. So why do they go out three steps? Well, you see it here. It creates separation from that guy. So they got to get out so when they catch it, it's away from him like that. That's a good look at what that should look like. Here we go, the five out, up top. That's what that should look like on the, the choice, the number three route. See if I can, that one didn't have much lead here. All right, he stemmed him out. That was the number three receiver. They're running screen. We got these guys to jump out with the screen. He went three steps out, he comes back. He's already got the ball ready to throw because there's a throwing lane. We put it on him. That's a good look there now. That's exactly what that should look like. I think this is up top. We got to go. We got the out. They're not taking away the out. Run the out. This is just one time we check the fade. Uh, there's going to be a decent amount of those because I tagged some of those on here. Um, you know, this was kind of our matchup play. All right, so we got choice. This is probably number three right here. You're like, who's covering him? Put it on him. Touchdown. So see how that drops a little different, Coach, Coach Anderson? I'll, you can see that. But watch the quarterback in the back copy of this. This is the drop for this play, which is there. That's exactly how we throw this play no matter what, whether he threw to the right or the left. That's his footwork. So, and they were kind of using that footwork in the other play when it was convenient. Now, I put this play on here because, you know, I said we use this play to throw outside goes for like fades, but every now and then you get somebody baiting. So, this team kind of, we play them every year. They know what we do a little bit. And so, they're kind of baiting us a little bit where we're hitting this five out a lot to him on them. So, watch this corner. He sees it comes up. You just left him wide open. I mean, even I could have scored a touchdown on that one. So you got to kind of get used to that. You got to, like we talked earlier in this, you got to talk about how, what are some ways we can uh, put our kids in a situation like that where the corner's jumping, what are we going to do? All right. Here we got number three. He's head up on him, so it should be easy. Three steps out, come back. That should be easy. Catch the ball. I mean, you can see that back copy is a pretty good copy of what that looks like. I mean, everyone get hit by that inside linebacker, but not a bit of catch the ball gets me hard. Same thing here. He's out there. There he is. See, we hard count them, and then we may have just called choice out of this set and given them this fade signal, been like, hey, we just like our guy versus their guy here. Let's give them something. Name down the numbers, throw it outside the numbers. All right. Let me see. Catch the touchdown there. Um, the number three receiver. Because we got running backs here, these running backs will fold in and block for the draw for the quarterback, and now he's running the choice by himself. You're that one down for some reason. You threw a hit. I mean, you threw a fade. 
We might have tagged this one to the fade. We might have done something different lately. Um, and this player, is, this X was a good player for us. You see a few of them here, right here. I mean, he's a good player. But you got to get them guys the ball. And this was our way to say, you know, if we didn't love something, there was something that was just basically stealing. You know, get it up and give them the ball. Um, You can see it inside go again, or the inside choice right again. Um, I think most people get the idea of this. Does anybody have a question about any of this? We sent motion, they didn't jump. Now we're going to do the same thing with the quads look choice here, but there's no doubt what we're doing here because we had a good X. They're playing him, man. Nobody over top of them. Oh, that got a ball, man. They make a play. Practice that all the time. That's pushing the ball vertical. You got to make people pay pushing the ball vertical. That's about all I had, guys. I didn't, uh, I could continue those plays, but everybody's got access to that and watch it. I'm going to ask questions. I don't want to bore you guys with um, the same play over and over again. But I think you got the idea of what I'm doing. And with that, and um, you know, glad answering questions anybody's got. No questions, Bo. None that I see. All right, I, I killed him. Um. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, y'all, as always. Um, and next time, we're going to talk about situational stuff and uh, short yardage, long yardage, medium yardage in the game. It'll be it'll be a lot of different plays, not just two plays. And um, then we'll be done with the scheme stuff and just talk about some practice stuff.